to another Looney Tunes review video. If this is your first time on the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel and give this video a like if you do like it. So this is a review for A Hick, A Slick and A Chick, released on the 13th of March 1948. It's the 517th in the series and it's directed by Art Davis. And funny story, I did the review with the unrestored print, but of course, as soon as I uploaded it and got it approved, a restoration came through on me TV. So that's the best way that you can see this. So yeah, what incredible timing that was, really. And again, because I can't show you the full cartoon, just a brief, um, brief synopsis. So we have Elmo, no, not that Elmo, but we've got Elmo, who's a uh, hick mouse who gets uh, all ready to go and visiting his girl Daisy Lou's house when she is caught kissing Blackie, who is the slick of this short. Now, you would expect them two to get into a massive fight, but no, they just compete for Daisy Lou's affections and they end up uh, getting uh, Herman the Cat involved later on as well. So with me is my fellow, I don't know if I'm going to say hick or a slick, definitely not a chick. If you've, if you've seen what Manny looks like, definitely not a chick. <laughs> it's my good friend Manny Cruz, say hi. Boys and <clears throat> Sorry, wrong Elmo. <laughs> Hello there, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so which one would you be, the hick or the uh, or the slick in this one? I mean, I'm. I, I mean, I'm. Both... Well, I would say a slick. I mean, I don't dress nearly as good as Blackie in this short, but I'm a city boy. I was born in the city, grew up in the city, and of course, I live very close to New York City, so. You can't get any more slick than that. Yeah. So I guess I'm the hick, you know, the, the, the hick Aussie, you know, um, <laughs> and as we say, you hear like, like, like the, the obo. Um, that's, that's one way to we, we, we call someone a hick. But so you learn something new. Aussie slang. There you go. Yobbo. Look it up. So <laughs> with this cartoon, a few bits of trivia. It's There's actually not really too much to this one. This is how very gag orientated this one is. But it's actually a very similar concept to Tex Avery's cartoon, The Hick Chick from 1946, where it's got the concept where you got, you know, a hick, you've got a slick, and you, of course you've got a chick. But the two shorts play out very differently. So it's not an exact copy or anything. It's just that the concept itself is very, very similar. And at the very end of the cartoon, you'll hear uh, Herman do this other voice. I mean, that's basically Jimmy Durante um, that he's uh, imitating right there. They'll ah, cha 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 cha. Yeah. Don't get nosy, Junior. That's actually the way Manny Cruz talks normally, by the way. I should say, you know, um, when, when, when he's at work. <laughs> you know, Let's um, not get um, nosy, Junior. <laughs> give me some pizza, Junior. <laughs> Give me some pizza. Ha, cha, cha, cha. And some like <laughs> <laughs> right. So with this one, this is what reminds me of why I'm doing what I'm doing with this Looney Tunes journey of watching every single one in order from the very start because I have never ever seen this one before. And I gotta say, it's it's a solid cartoon. I mean, by this point, I would expect really nothing else from Mark Davis, who by this point I think has really settled in directing. He knows his gags. And he knows what, what he's doing, I think, more than what people might realize. Because if you look at Elmo, he's got this lively, more lively animation, the whole shucks sort of thing. But then if you look at Blackie, it's more limited movement and more strong poses. Like he's really, you know, the stuck up, you know, uh, person that you would expect here. Um, and, and also Elmo seems to be more like Beaky Buzzard anyway. I think that's, uh, it's like a spiritual successor, I guess. But... What, what do you think of this one? Because you've, you've obviously seen this one before I did. So what do you think? Um, it's been a while since I've seen it. There were certain parts of it that I remembered well, but it's definitely it's definitely a really funny short. And it's just another indicator to me, as well as other Looney Tunes fans. It's a shame that Davis didn't do any more cartoons after his uh, unit was terminated. I mean, I as I've said to you, Anthony, and I've said to others before, I have a soft spot for the team of Ben Hardaway and Cal Dalton, but clearly their cartoons weren't the best. And then you look at somebody like uh, Arthur Davis, or and also to an extent somebody like Norm McCabe, where there was the potential, and especially with Davis, just a ton of potential, and a, a lot of really funny cartoons, but unfortunately, you know, the business is business. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, costs needed to... 
become back. You know, shorts were getting more expensive to make, and that's what happens. And it is something that we are we will cover when I do the Art Davis uh, retrospective, which will come after the long-awaited uh, Bob Clampett one. So, um, but yeah, I absolutely like this. I mean, some some of the scenes, are, you know, are great. I just like the whole thing about it. You know, every time Elmo seems to think, "Yep, this will win her over." The, I just love the the contrast that what, what Blackie does. Uh, I brought you some flowers. <laughs> oh, how nice, Elmo. Put them over there by Blackie. Yeah, and of course, you know, the piano, the, the playing the instruments, you know, where he's got some, you know, hick instrument and then Blackie's playing the piano where he plays the, like, what is it, Boogie Woogie, I think? Is that... Did I get that right? Oh, Blackie. You're wonderful. Yes, actually, uh, thank you for bringing it up because when uh, Blackie's playing the, the Boogie Woogie, it's almost exactly the same uh, song that's featured in uh, Rhapsody Rabbit when the mouse and bug start doing the duet. Like I was listening to the melody and it's like with, with a very slight change at the end, it's almost exactly the same. And the instrument that um, that Elmo's playing is called a Jew's harp. Ah, okay. See, I didn't I didn't know that at all because I'm I'm not a musician, but no, it's always always good to le learn some new things uh, in relation to that sort of thing. So, what what do you think of the cat at the end? I mean, it's just a typical cat, but I guess it's kind of a, an evolution towards uh, Heathcliff later on that Art Davis would do in one of the greatest Looney Tunes ever made. But I mean, what do you think of the cat? Like, did you think? So that cat is not a prototype of Sylvester? Oh my goodness. It's I gotta not. Throw everything at <laughs> You know, just yeah, you're right. Just I mean, when I saw that cat, it's just a generic cat, you know, whatever. But I mean it paid off at the end with the nice little uh you know, with the Jimmy Durante uh voice that the, uh, comes out of the cat and a nice little reveal that uh Elmo got uh the Ermine or the Herman from. And you know, I, I I will say though now talk thinking about the ending with the uh, with the cat talking. I I don't know who animated that scene, but it's just I like the way that the cat moves. Not only when he's walking away, you know, with the with the hole in his butt, but also it's just like the way that he slams the door at Blackie and uh, just like his facial expressions. I wish I knew who animated it. You know, too bad Austin's not here. But you know, I just like the way it, uh, it looked. Oh yes, yeah, and, and, and just, that's definitely a high point of this cartoon, the wonderful animation. So, just to slowly wrap this one up, for me, in terms of rating, I probably would give this a seven and a half out of ten. And I think part of it is I don't have any real nostalgia for this one. I may need to watch it a few more times, maybe appreciate it a bit more. But it, it, it's—I don't think it's as good as the previous Art David shorts, but it's solid. It made me laugh, and. I think seven and a half is um, a good score for that. I mean, what what do you think? I've seen this one before. I've enjoyed it. Just small little things, like I said. You, almost every single Arthur Davis short features amazing animation. The music is really cool. You know, the Elmo's theme song throughout the whole cartoon is Arkansas Traveler. I like there's a, a part when uh, I think he's going around the train when he's drunk. And you hear a minor version of the melody as opposed to major. And just small little gags in between. Like I said, the Jimmy Durante voice makes me laugh. And uh, when Blackie, yeah, I was telling you before, when the close-up of Blackie and he wiggles his ears, always makes me crack up. Um, it's not Davis's best short, but it's definitely one of his better ones. I'd give it 8 out of 10. All right. Yep. That's, uh, that's definitely fair. And, and, and as you mentioned about the ears... That that I guess um, illustrates my point about you know the whole strong poses and limited movement of uh, Blackie versus the, the more lively animation for Elmo. I've got to point out as well. I mean Daisy Lou, you know, <laughs> I guess Davis's unit really knows how to draw draw women, <laughs> especially as mice. It's just a... <laughs> oh, you are you, know, you are barking up so the weird. wrong tree, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is a dangerous thing. <laughs> That's but, right. Yeah. I, I'm too scared to to look it up. You know, if I type in Daisy Lou, I'm sure I'd get 
you know, I'll get a lot of daisies and a lot of blues, I'm sure. But um, we'll remember, <laughs> wrap uh, it up rule, there. rule 34 is well, a thing. <laughs> I, I, uh, it, it's a rule that I definitely um, think is meant to be broken. So, in any case, we'll leave it on rule 34 um, for this one. Oh, and um, <laughs> as always, guys, thank you so much for listening. And until next time, take care. See you later, Daisy Lou. Don't get nosy, Junior.